Uh, so we, we are talking about the, how the overall ecosystem looks like when it comes to uh, managing composable memory. And this is in the context of uh, how the CXL is progressing uh, as we go from you know, 1.1 to 2.0 to, to 3.0 and beyond. So most of my discussions will be mostly um, architecture and, and, and sort of workload uh, related. Uh, I won't be talking about anything uh, um, product specific. Thank you. So uh, we will talk about uh, how the, the what what people call these days as a data center of the next generation. How that is shaping out to be. How uh, you know the the traditional server based architectures are are giving way to more uh, composable you know software uh, uh, addressable uh, sort of uh, architectures and how CXL will play a role in, in creating fabrics and, and, and sort of ensuring that uh, you have the optimal use of the hardware resources uh, when it comes to deployment at scale. So let's jump straight into it. So basically, what, what is CXL trying to do? Uh, you know, we are trying to make uh, data appear closer, or we are trying to take uh, compute near data and then basically act on it sooner. So, so those are the two major trends that we see when it comes to um, the CXL interconnect. And, and this in turn will lead to a whole new set of uh, accelerators, a whole new set of uh, you know, GPU, FPGA, you know, DPU technologies, which will make use of uh, CXL-based connectivity to, to access data, get learnings from it, and, and, and process it uh, independent of the, the server CPU. Uh, what it also means is, uh, you know, some of the questions that were asked earlier, uh, you don't need to have one type of drivers for managing storage, one type of uh, drivers to manage, uh, uh, you know, persistent memory, something for DDR5, something for DDR4. It all has to be homogenized so that you are able to you know, the, the application should see this thing as completely transparent, that there should not be a need to change the application because you managed to add in a, a module for CXL or, or attach something NVMe over Fabric. It should be completely transparent to that. So, so that's the, the goal. And as we march towards it, um, you know, basically the whole ecosystem has to, has to play a role uh, to bring it all together. So uh, left to right, this is just a, a progression of how we see it. Um, you know, direct attached memory uh, to the socket, everybody knows about it. Uh, there's only so much you can scale using it. Um, I mean, some, some of you must have done uh, DDR controllers and, and layouts and, and, you know, expanding it to 20 channels is, is crazy. So, so what's the next best step? Uh, you can do some sort of a, a scale out memory. This is where the, the first generation of CXL comes into play. And this is where, uh, you know, uh, hyperscalers and, and enterprise and HPC workloads have, have specific, uh, uh, you know, bandwidth per core or, or capacity per core numbers. And as the number of cores increase, um, these are the ways in which you can manage the, those requirements. Like if someone says, I, I need a workload which requires you know, five gigabit per second. Um, then, you know, if you if you if you can't meet that that bandwidth, then that application suffers, and and hence uh, the, the the scale out memory using direct attached uh, CXL capable buffers is the first step. Now things get really exciting when you talk about pooling and disaggregation, because. Uh, in that scenario, what happens is not only you are able to meet the application performance, you are able to meet it most optimally. So, so the, the earlier speaker talked about how we can uh, tier DDR5 with DDR4. Um, you know, this is uh, this is one way of sort of mitigating the the costs of DDR5. Or how do you manage to tier, um, you know, maybe some 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 sort of a uh, you know low latency flash. And what that will do is your, your bomb cost of the system goes dramatically low. And, and whatever is the impact to the application, um, you know, now you have, 
you, you have a sliding scale. Like maybe I, I get hit by 5%, but my bomb cost dropped by 30%. Is it acceptable? Uh, the other thing we should also note is that many of these applications have always run on two socket systems. So the best NUMA hop they have seen is, is one hop away. Maybe they don't need that latency. Maybe it is something that you know, they can tolerate higher latencies. All of these things have to be tried out. All of these things have to be tuned and, and, and made acceptable. And again, this is a, CMAC was saying, you know, it takes a village. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the amount of stakeholders who show up in the, in the CXL ecosystem, this is not something which one, one vendor can do alone. Um, so coming to runtime uh, memory management, um, you know, so as I mentioned, we had direct attach, scale out, and pooling, and that's how the, the system memory composability sort of increases. Now, there are various ways of doing it. You can do memory tiering and, and page migration. Um, uh, we'll talk about that. Um, Multi-type memory management. Um, I, I think uh, some of the options on, on multi-type memory have been getting, you know, whittled down recently, but you know, uh, you can use uh, SSDs or you can use uh, NVMe over, over Fabric to, to sort of create that. And, and finally, uh, there have been many public papers where, uh, you know, folks have talked about how memory has been left stranded, how, how memory is not able to be optimally attached to a given server. So how do you borrow that memory? How do you allocate that memory? on demand as required and, and in general sort of reduce the overall, uh, you know, uh, capex uh, costs for, for, a, for a data center. So when I talk about tiered memory, it's, uh, you know, we, we can call it hot, warm, cold or hot and cold. Uh, one way of uh, mitigating the, the, the longer latencies is to, is to uh, do some sort of uh, page migration where you are able to, uh, you know, sort of detect if a particular page is looking hotter, and in which case move it to closer memory, closer in latency. If, if a certain page is not getting many accesses, then you, you kind of say that, you know, let's demote that page to a, a colder uh, memory tier. So, so this is, this is one, one way of describing it. Uh, I'm in marketing, so I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, enough to say that, you know, we have these, uh, you know, the sort of the static uh, resource allocation tables and uh, the heterogeneous uh, memory attribute tables, which tell you what type of uh, memory it is, what type of, uh, you know, bandwidth it is, you know, how, how much latency it is, and then accordingly allocate the, the processor accesses to that type of memory. And, um, so when it comes to tiered memory, we, we talk about you know page migration, and one of the ways of doing it is uh, either you you give the control to the software, or you sort of do it in hardware. Uh, there are pros and cons to both approaches. Uh, if you do it in software, um, you know typically your hypervisor, your your application has a far better understanding of when it is seeing a a, a slowdown in performance uh, in runtime performance. Um, on the other hand, if you do it in hardware, then the performance is better. Uh, it, it may lead to unexpected behavior at, at times, um, but both are the approaches which, which, which can be used. And uh, we have seen both type of approaches being explored in the, in the ecosystem. Uh, so when it comes to like page migration, typically, you know, what do you do? Uh, you, you, you track the the access is going to a particular page. You see if there are page misses, you see if there are you know, hits. And, and in general, the, sometimes it's the hypervisor, sometimes it is some, some kernel level module which determines does that page uh, get to stay in its hot or cold place or does it need to move? Um, you know, whether you do page migration also depends on how long is that application running. I mean, we have heard of, you know, microservices and, and you know, this type of, um, you know, uh, serverless use cases where applications live for seconds. I mean, there might be scenarios where 
before you can migrate the page, the, the job is done. So, so again, it's a, it's, a, it's a process which we have to go application by application and, and, and workload by workload to figure out if, if page migration will indeed, indeed be uh, useful or how, how, does it, uh, how does it work to improve the performance. Um, one thing that we always uh, also get asked about is, uh, you know, what is the, the security in this whole process? I mean, when, when you are talking about, you know, people are used to a core and, and a DRAM attached to it. And, and that is part of a trusted enclave. And, you know, if you are hosted on public cloud, you know, the, the, the hoster doesn't know what application are you running and you are guaranteed that, that privacy. And the same privacy has to extend when you are dealing with, uh, with, with CXL attached or, or a fabric attached memory. I mean, that, that particular uh, secure environment has to be extended to the DRAM, to the, to the direct attached uh, CXL buffers or, or over to a uh, uh, fabric. And, and that, that shows up as a, as a lot of uh, use cases where, uh, you know, a lot deeper uh, dive is required and a lot of, uh, you know, debug is required. So, in this particular case, I would say, you know, the, the right-hand side sort of represents the, 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 the simplest way in which you could, you could allocate a memory pool. Um, it's a multi-headed uh, device and, and you have two hosts accessing distinct regions in the memory. You know, fairly simple uh, and, and that should be the first uh, solid step that the whole ecosystem should take to ensure that uh, you know, a, a memory pool can be indeed be created. The middle picture is is, is sort of a, a, a more generic view where you have a, a switch, uh, uh, there are CXL switches around, and uh, you are able to have multiple hosts and multiple uh, targets in terms of endpoints, and all of them can come, can be accessed uh, from any host. And and naturally this this leads to other considerations such as uh, loaded latencies and, and, and buffering of memory and, and you know how many reads to how many writes and how the switch handles it. Uh, the, the fun really starts in the first picture where now you have multiple tiers and multiple hosts and, and now you know when you have so many applications accessing different types of memories, different tiers of memories, uh, what are the what are the read write patterns? You know what are the latency requirements? All of these become uh, you know harder and harder to quantify, and, and 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 again this is the place where more application level tuning is required. More um, sometimes you may have to put bounding boxes on. You know these are the four types of applications that work on that particular system. Uh, many of the Enterprise use cases are, are fairly limited in, in the type of applications they use. So, so that's one way to sort of achieve a, a high performance system with, with pooled memory uh, as you take the initial steps. Um, there are um, new functions or, or, or new devices or, or new um, modules which will be required in hardware and software. As we, as we look at runtime uh, memory allocation and pooling, um, uh, you know, there are, you know, some, some, some people talk about hot, hot plugging of memory. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's a very, um, you know, a use case which, which exposes a whole bunch of, uh, um, you know, it shows how, how well compliant you are with the, with the CXL spec. Um, what, what also happens at times is that uh, there are certain devices uh, which, which may be physically attached, but, but they may change their functions. And in that case, um, even though the hot plug is not a physical hot plug, it still looks like a logical hot plug. And, and as a result, um, you, know, you, you still have to deal with the, with the fact that there was memory which was visible as part of the system and suddenly it has vanished and maybe it came back as, as, a, as, a, as a memory of a different type. So, um, you know, just, uh, th this, is, this is something which is, which is uh, you know, we, we had software vendors talk about it, we had, uh, you know, memory vendors talk about it. So, so this is something which, is, which has to be all pulled together in terms of 
um, you know, some sort of a bake-off or some sort of a, a, a demo where everybody benefits from the, 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 the learnings that have been gained as part of uh, the, the CXL uh, ecosystem. And then, you know, finally, what I would say is that the, the goal is to get to composable and, and disaggregated modes, uh, not because, you know, it's, it's cool architecture, it's because it, it solves problems related to costs, performance, and, and, and power. And, and if, if there is, you know, money to be saved or, or money to be made, um, you know, people come together and, and they solve the problem. And what we want is the, uh, you know, many, many use cases. We just don't want uh, a cloud focus or a HPC focus. Um, you know, I have searched high and low for, say, a telco use case which required memory. Um, or, or, a, or a fintech use case, or, or some, something related to healthcare. So, so we have to look across the spectrum in terms of verticals and, and applications to figure out uh, what, will, what will work for CXL and what won't. And finally, you know, we, this, is, this is true. Um, as as uh, you know, hardware vendors are, are extremely aware of, uh, you, know, you cannot pay anyone enough money to change software. So, so you have to work by keeping the application as it is. And, and, and many people have tried that option of, I'll give you more performance if you change your application, and it never does really work. So, so application transparency, it shouldn't matter whether you're running on direct attached memory or, or some sort of scale out memory, or you're completely running out of a, a memory which is attached to a fabric, it should, it should still look the same. And um, you know, so that's that's again the goal when we when we look at uh, runtime composable memory. I think that was my last slide. Um, if we have time for questions, I can take it. Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Thank you. Oh, oh this. Sorry. So is AMD is going to look at some more development kit like other vendors are looking at for memory pooling, tearing, optimizations of software stack on the host. Is there any plans for AMD for another development kit? <laughs> I, I, I really can't talk product specific, but you know we, we are an active member of the consortium, and uh, you know we we see where the trends are going. So yeah. Uh, you mentioned on the disaggregation and the composable part of it, you mentioned security. But from a security point of view, what do you think are the problems to be solved? Or at, at least has, is the consortium looking at solving the problem? Like, you know, is it access control? Is it ensuring a trusted execution environment and things like that? Is the consortium already solved it or is it all to be solved, or what about also like link encryption? Maybe I asked the question earlier. I, I really don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I just know that you know, just the way uh, uh, you know when you, when you boot your, your your server, and when when you say I have so much amount of DRAM, and then I have so much amount of CXL memory, uh, there should not be any hesitancy from from anybody saying, well, my my data is residing in in CXL memory, so. Is it safe? Is it good? I think it should be treated on par as as regular, you know, tier one local socket attached DRAM. Okay. That that's that's the goal. Um, again, um, so I, you're, you're saying it's it's more of a hardware platform um, uh, service to assure security of the security uh, of the yes. components, I mean, and then the software will just consume it. Correct. And 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 sometimes you know there is there are cases where you know people ask whether is, is, is PCI based you know IDE will, will you use link encryption or will you use you know your own technology and and these are you know these are sort of problems in flight I, I don't think we have the the final answer on all of these um, but but in general from from a server platform point of view the most of the ecosystem looks towards the server vendors to, to figure out how the security is being determined. Okay. 
Thank you.